I was working in the incident room at Edward Jenner Court. Uh, we were all maintaining our two meter distancing just in case. And uh, the Wednesday, I remember, I just felt a little bit out of sorts. I didn't feel hot or, or cold or, or any sort of headache, but I just didn't feel quite right. And David Nankerville said to me, uh, how are you doing, Sam? And I said, do you know, I just feel a little bit uh, out of sorts. And immediately Angela Willen produced a tympanic thermometer, stuck it in my ear, and I had a temperature of 38.6. So everybody backed off and said, right, we think you ought to go, which I, I did immediately, obviously. I took myself home uh, and funnily enough, my wife wasn't very well. And so we're not really sure where it could have come from. But um, she retired to bed. I did the tea for the kids, didn't feel particularly unwell, was looking after everybody else. And uh, it wasn't until the following day that it hit me like a wall. And uh, it was not necessarily a, a steady decline. It was off a cliff. I just felt absolutely wretched. Everything ached, burning sensations in my legs and arms. And uh, by the Friday, I'd, I'd contacted 111 and the first ambulance had arrived. I was rushed uh, into um, Redditch uh, because I live in Worcestershire. And that's a fairly, almost the uh, ideal hospital. Uh, and they patched me up, they gave me some fluids because I hadn't really had anything to eat or drink and uh, gave me painkillers, anti-emetics and sent me home again. And for around 12 hours, I, I felt considerably better. Unfortunately, uh, things began to go wrong again and uh, I gradually this time became more and more unwell. And by the Saturday, I uh, would crashed again. This time sent off to Worcester Hospital. Uh, where they did exactly the same thing. They kept me in for about six hours, gave me IV fluids because I, I hadn't been eating or drinking. Um, they gave me IV paracetamol, brought my temperature down, painkillers because I was still aching all over, and the anti-emetics because I was being violently ill. And I felt great. And so they sent me home again. <laughs> so uh, you, can, you can appreciate a pattern was forming here. Uh, on my first visit to Redditch, they did COVID swab me, and we got the result on the Sunday when I was at home. Uh, that I was COVID positive. Uh, unfortunately, feeling very, very un unwell again and having suffered a, a gastric bleed, I really realized things were not going very well at all. This was serious stuff. And so we contacted 999, they picked me up, rushed me in, and I was admitted to the ward at uh, Worcester Royal. And this was a COVID only ward. I think it's a testament to how unwell I was that you really don't mind what happens to you. You sort of lie there and as people stick needles into you and cannulate you and pump you full of intravenous antibiotics and fluids and so on and so forth, you just lie there accepting the facts. And you sort of just hope that whatever you've got inside you keeps you going until you're well enough to start supporting yourself. Uh, when I was uh, pushed into the ward area, um, it was a four bedded bay. Uh, uh, it was myself and, and three very elderly gentlemen. And um, unfortunately it was most disruptive for the staff and for the other visitors. There were people who were very, very unwell. And there was a lot of occasional rushing around and, and trying to make sure everything was all right. So I was well aware that there were people who were dying on the units because of COVID or any associated illness. So it was a real sobering realization. And um, I think not that staff can become blasé, but we do, we do become used to almost um, when somebody passes away, unfortunately. Uh, when it's the person in the bed next door to you, who you've been chatting to the day before, it has an incredible impact. The turning point for, for me probably came around four days after my admission. Um, the IV fluids had stopped by and then I was able to eat and drink fairly well. My taste had completely changed. Everything that was served to me tasted absolutely awful. It tasted just like cardboard. If it wasn't for salad cream, I don't know if I'd still be here today. And I had that on virtually everything apart from my breakfast cereal. But uh, the taste thing, I wasn't really sure if it was hospital food or if it was just my altered taste. Um, day four, as I say, uh, was the turning point where I was able to, to sort of get up and, and walk myself to the, to the bathroom rather than need help. I was off the IV fluid, still on IV antibiotics. And um, I had CT scans of gut and, and, and so on and so forth and chest. And I, I seemed to be on the mend. And, I was actually getting out of bed and, and walking up and down the four bedded bay trying to get some, some muscle tone back because my legs looked like, like a couple of sticks of celery. The, the, the muscle wastage was, was just phenomenal in just around a week. I was stunned by it. Um, 
it was it was rather an odd departure because I was given the all clear, given um, oral antibiotics and um, an antacid and uh, a um, a proton pump inhibitor, and uh, they said, "Don't go that way. You have to go that way." And it was a sort of a back exit out through a fire uh, exit into the car park where, where my wife was waiting in a deserted car park. It was Armageddon-like, <laughs> where I hobbled over, jumped into the back of the car, and was whisked home. Once I got home, absolutely delighted to see everybody, uh, then retired to bed because I was absolutely exhausted, uh, which was um, the early April. And I, I tried my best along with my family to, to get back to some form of normality. Work were absolutely brilliant. My line manager and uh, anybody above them were, were very, very supportive. They very kindly sent flowers to my wife, which meant the world to her. She, she did sort of feel a little bit alone. Her parents couldn't visit. She was out on a limb. And uh, any support and, and the contact with my family and with me was, was really very, very heartfelt, very emotional. Poor Michael Richardson had me break down on the phone a couple of times when I was giving him an update. But uh, he was very, very reassuring. And um, eventually I came back to a phased return in early May. It was around May the 5th, I think. And um, the following week, I came back in for another two days. And in all fairness, I look back at the two days I've been in previously, in the week before, and I thought, what on earth was I doing? Coming in, because I really felt I must have been just sat there staring at everybody doing the work was trying to uh, get back into the swing of things. And I, I now, only now really, in the past week or maybe fortnight, feel that I'm back to my old form. So apologies to anybody who I've, uh, who's had to work with me in, in a somewhat vacant manner. But I, it's only when you get better that you look back and realize that you weren't really that, that much better at all. So it has been an exceedingly slow process. I've tried to do what I can, healthy diet, exercise, and so on and so forth. But as I say, the, the trust have been very, very supportive and very understanding. I thought I was fit and healthy and it had a very serious effect for me. I'm not really sure why I was susceptible to it. And I think that's the problem. Nobody knows how it's going to affect them. And what could be a relatively mild illness for somebody, no worse than a common cold, could be life-threatening for somebody else. So even if you have got it and it's mild symptoms, then be mindful that you don't want to pass this on to somebody who may suffer as a result.